Uh, Geronimo from Salinas, California. I was just watching Halloween Havoc 98 DDP against Goldberg and was wondering how would you have ended Goldberg's undefeated streak? What do you think about DDP being the guy to end it if he loses to Goldberg at Halloween Havoc? So close to winning but falls short. Then he goes on to win the 60-man World War III match that sets up the rematch at Starcade, And DDP gets the clean win over Goldberg becoming world champion and ending the streak. When people have asked me before who I think should have been the one to end the streak, I always say DDP. Uh, I think he would have been a much better choice than Kevin Nash and, and, and doing what they did. Uh, I think you, you've got a good plan there, especially since the pay-per-view feed got cut off early in a lot of, in a lot of markets. I don't think it got cut off for everybody, but some of the cable systems actually cut the show off. It went long because of the Warrior Hogan stuff. And there were people who bought the pay-per-view and never got to see the main event. It would have been a disaster if that was the night that Goldberg's streak ended and you had all these people who couldn't see it except the people in the building. Uh, they had to replay the entire main event on Nitro the next night because nobody saw it. I would have had Goldberg beat Nash at Halloween Havoc. I think a good compromise to that is you have Goldberg beat Nash at Halloween Havoc. And then you could have DDP win World War III and then beat Goldberg for the belt at Starcade. You know, but Goldberg was still white hot in the fall of 98. So, you know, realistically, he could have held that title well into 99. I mean, it wasn't like the fans were starting really to turn on him too much. I mean, I don't remember the fans really turning on him much. It might have been a different story in today's wrestling world, maybe. But he was still a white hot babyface back then. But I think DDP would have been the best choice. I mean, he, he was so... Kind of like Goldberg. I mean, he was so organically over. I've always said the two real stars that WCW made during that Monday Night War period were Goldberg and DDP. You know, Booker T became a star, but he was not a star at the level that Goldberg or DDP were when they were at the peak of their popularity. Not even close. Same with Scott Steiner, although he was a heel. He wasn't really supposed to be a babyface. Uh, Sting, Sting was already a star coming into that era, so he doesn't count. So it really was Goldberg and DDP. But that it was just it was such a hot match, the one they had at Halloween having. It was so well booked too. They with the shoulder injury, Goldberg couldn't lift him up for the jackhammer, and then DDP counters into a diamond cutter. Just blew the roof off the place. It was easily the best match of Goldberg's career. I think Goldberg has said the same. And I'm so glad I had the chance to interview Dallas as part of the countdown that I did when I, I listed the top 15 matches in WCW history. This match was on that list. And so I got him to come on the show and kind of talk me through it. That was episode 416 in the archives if you want to go check it out. I got the whole playlist for that countdown up on the YouTube channel, by the way. All the, all the different segments are up there. To hear him talk about asking Goldberg in the back when the match was over, like, why'd you kick out at two instead of, you know, kicking out at two and a half? And, yeah, this was after he gave him the diamond cutter. And Goldberg just tells him, dude, I don't remember anything after that spear that I gave you. You know, where he basically spiked himself on the landing. He was out. And he was just going on instinct. You know, it's little things like that that you don't know about, but you find out about it later on. And it's like, how do these guys do it? You know, they wrestle another five minutes, they remember all their spots, but they're concussed to all hell, <laughs> their brains are scrambled, and then after they have no memory of it. It's like Undertaker at WrestleMania 30. All right, first five minutes of the match, he got concussed badly, has no memory of, of anything, but he got through the rest of the match, he, he remembered enough of his spots in the finish, he got through it, it's like they just kind of go on autopilot. And it's kind of scary. Tay from DC. Which of these AEW stars could you eventually see returning to WWE first, getting a Hall of Fame induction, and coming back to wrestle, train, or coach? Chris Jericho, John Moxley, Christian Cage, or Brian Danielson? They're all going into the WWE Hall of Fame at some point. Of those four, the one who I think has the best chance of going back first, I think, is Jericho. Cody from New Orleans, Louisiana. If you had to erase one wrestler from history out of these four, who would you erase? You erase that wrestler, their promos, and their matches. Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, or The Undertaker? Ooh. It comes down to The Rock or The Undertaker for me, and I, cannot, I can't erase The Rock. 
So I would have to say goodbye to The Undertaker. And Chris from Northern New Jersey. What are your Mount Rushmore? Oh, here we go with the Mount Rushmores. Mount Rushmores by WWE Eras. And in his email, he lists Hogan Savage, Andre Warrior, Brett Sean, Austin Rock, Cena, Roman, Brock, and Orton. And I guess those are the only eras he listed. I think you nailed the golden era. I think it's Andre, Hogan, Savage, Warrior. You could sub Roddy Piper for the Warrior, but Warrior was big when I was a kid, so I I would go Warrior. Look, my brother and I had the Hogan and Warrior wrestling buddies. New Generation Era, that would be Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, and Razor Ramon. Attitude Era has to be Stone Cold Rock, Mankind, and Triple H. Ruthless Aggression Era, that would be Kurt Angle. Brock Lesnar, I would go Eddie Guerrero and Edge. I know everybody associates John Cena, you know, because he came out and said Ruthless Aggression, right? And that was his debut. But I, I gotta go Angle Lesnar. Lesnar, Lesnar and Angle definitely are on there, and I would do Eddie and Edge. Post Ruthless Aggression, which sort of blends into the start of the PG era. I go John Cena, Batista, Randy Orton, and probably Edge again. 